everybody, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting with me today. So in today's video, we are going to go over the Ruby, Frankie, Jody Hildebrandt situation, um, you know, just to kind of get us ready for the sentence. And now, please forgive me if this isn't as, as comprehensive as it should be, because time got away from me. And I really wanted to put this video up a few days ago, and I wasn't ready. <clears throat> and the sentencing is tomorrow, my birthday. Um, happy birthday, me! But anyway, the the sentencing is tomorrow, and so this video needs to go, go up. So um, forgive me if I reference my notes quite a bit, and forgive me, again, if it's not as comprehensive as, as it should be. Um, I uh, admittedly didn't get as much work done on this as I would have liked to. And I probably shouldn't even be making this video because it's not, what we're just going to see where it goes. We're just going to see how it goes. Um, but so with the Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt sentences tomorrow, um, they should be in the morning. Um, I think both sentences are to, sentences are to take place before 11 a.m. I had the exact times but I can't remember where I wrote them down at and I can't, for some reason, can't find the information anymore. Um, so to uh, kind of get you up to speed if you're not, but you know, I think most people are, uh, Ruby Frankie was a pretty well-known family vlogger back in the day. I believe she started her channel, Eight Passengers in 2015. It was Ruby, her husband, Kevin, and their six children. Um, and now of the two of those six children are, are adult age. Um, hold on. I'm sorry. So the channel documented their life and has amassed nearly 2.5 million subscribers. And they started actually losing subscribers as well. Um, controversy was sparked by this channel on several occasions because, um, causing many people to accuse Ruby and Kevin of CA, um, Chad, the oldest, he is an adult now, so I'm comfortable saying his name. Um, Chad uh, was forced to sleep on a beanbag chair in the, I believe, the family room for seven months because of something he did to uh, his younger brother. Um, he, What he did was he, first he woke him up in the middle of the night and told him to get ready because they were going to Disneyland. And he also hung him from the basketball hoop and he pointed a BB gun at him. So he got in trouble for those offenses. So a lot of people will only mention the Disneyland thing and think, I, I mean, I think that punishment is harsh anyway, but people don't mention the other things he did to the boy, you know. He definitely deserves some kind of, 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 of uh, you know, dealing with, but I don't know that making him sleep on a beanbag chair for seven months was the way to go. That seems very extreme and um, A-B-U-S-I-V-E. In my opinion, just my opinion, I know not everybody agrees. Um, so uh, many viewers were concerned about Ruby's disciplinary tactics, and, which included withholding food. She, withholding food was like one of her favorite things to do, it seemed. Like, I'm not gonna let you eat. I'm not gonna let you have breakfast. You're not gonna get dinner if I have to say it one more time. Things like that. Um, and even with, even withholding affection. Now, I don't see people bring that up a lot, but she did withhold affection a lot. Um, and that is a form of ABUSE, to withhold affection. You know, make that love, uh, conditional, you know. Um, they also sent Chad to wilderness camp, threatened to cut off the head of a stuffed animal, telling the youngest, the two youngest, they wouldn't be getting anything for Christmas because of, you know, the choices they've been making. Um, and the YouTube channel would begin losing popularity in 2021. In 2022, after Ruby and Kevin separated and Kevin moved out of the house, Ruby deleted the eight passengers channel. Now, the reason Kevin moved, the reason I understand is Ruby had already known Jody and they were already friends. Well, Jody, as we found out from interviews with other people that had been involved with Jody in the past, she had a thing about 
breaking up marriages and pushing the man away. So, uh, and that's what happened here. She advised Ruby that they should separate, that her and Kevin should separate, and that he needs to move out of the house and go no contact, basically. And that was Jody's idea, and Ruby took it to heart and, and, and did that. And she began working as a mental health coach at Connections, an organization run by, ran by Judy Hildebrandt, um, Jody Hildebrandt, and Ruby and Jody launched your own channel in 2022, um, I believe the channel was just called Connections with an X and um, had an Instagram account called Moms of Truth. And I did, before that Instagram account was taken down, it may still be up, I don't know, but uh, I did check it out before and it is disturbing. In my opinion, it's very disturbing. Yeah. So after this relationship with Jody began, the eldest Frankie daughter um, was contacted by neighbors saying that, the children are being left alone for long periods of time. So Sherry called um, called the police and asked them if they could like do a safety check on the kids and check out to see what happened. But nobody opened the door. There was no kind of response. Um, and the littlest one, the littlest girl, she would wander around knocking on people's door, asking if their kids could come out and play. And they would the neighbors would be like, well, they're at school. And she said, I'll wait, which is so sad. They had no friends, no contact with other children because they were homeschooled. And now, yes, Marshall was homeschooled and I'm not down on homeschool. And I think that homeschool and when done properly is a great thing for a child. But you, at least it's my opinion, you have to be involved in organizations and things. Like Marshall was involved in a lot of different um things. You know, he was doing karate. He was doing, um, he could have played team sports. He could have done all kinds of things. They had a prom, they had all this stuff. So, uh, so they're not so isolated, you know? Um, but yeah, the children are being left home alone. So the cops came, but there was no, no answer at any time. So we're now going to fast forward to August 30th, 2023. Frankie's 12 year old son, uh, escaped Jody's house and went to a neighbor's house and asked for food and water. And the man at that home called 911 and said, I have a 12 year old boy here. He was asking for food and water and said to call the police. He says we've, he's um, emaciated. He's wearing clothes that are way too big for him. And I'm paraphrasing here. And he um, is, you know, he has duct tape on his wrists and ankles. And they're like, he's been held captive, you know. And um, so the, the rescue came. And when they came, they also went to Jody's house and found the youngest daughter there. And she was also emaciated and looked malnourished. So they took both kids to the hospital. And um, they were both taken to the hospital where the boy was treated for severe malnourishment and deep lacerations from being tied up with a rope. A search of the house uncovered evidence consistent with the markings on the 12 year old. The Utah Division of Child and Family Services took the children, including two more Frankie children into care. Now the other two children, the two older children or the two middle children, they were at a friend of Ruby's house, Pam Botcher, I think her last name was. And um, she, uh, you know, so far is acting like she had no idea what was going on over there. Not a lot of people believe her, but um, we don't know where she falls into this. Um, if she's going to be found guilty of anything or not. I don't know. I think they pretty much just let her go on that one. Um, I don't think they should. I think I really believe she knows what was going on over there because she's been, she's known Jody for, I think, 30 years and has been involved in this connections organization. And um, Jody's niece, who was also a victim of Jody's, um, uh, Jesse, she was also like pretty much held captive by her and mistreated by her and starved by her and tied up and duct taped and stuff by Jody. Uh, she says Pam was one of her, you know, minions, basically. Um, 
But so Ruby, Frankie, and Jody Hildebrandt were arrested on August 30th, 2023, and were charged with six counts of aggravated CA, which is a felony. Now, I saw one YouTube, YouTuber say, well, aggravated means that the, the children were bothering them, and that's why they did the CA. Like, no, that's not what aggravated CA means. <laughs> that's not what it means, but okay. But Frankie and Hildebrandt have been held without bail since then. So they've been in jail since August 30th. And mind you, after sentencing, they're more than likely going to be granted time served. So whatever their sentence is, you know, they're probably going to be about six months taken off of it for time already served. On December 18th, 2023, Ruby ple pleaded guilty to four counts, four of the six counts, of aggravated CA and the district attorney dropped two of the six counts per the agreement where Ruby agreed to the terms of serving a prison sentence consecutively and that she would testify against Jody Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt pleaded guilty to four of the six counts on December 27, 2023 with two charges dropped as part of her agreement. I guess she didn't want, um, want a trial because she doesn't want Ruby testifying against her. Um, the sentence in is scheduled for 2 2024, which is tomorrow. Hopefully this video gets up before then. Um, the six counts initially filed accounted for three ways prosecutors said Frankie and Hildebrandt caused or allowed serious injury to the children. One being through a combination of physical injuries or torture. Two, through starvation or malnutrition that jeopardizes life. And three, by causing severe emotional harm, the four counts have a penalty of one to 15 years in prison and a $10,000 fine, any per, per $10,000 fine per charge. Any prison time given will be served consecutively so she can get as much as 60 years, the same for Jody. And um, the DA that Jesse spoke to, this is according to Jesse, the DA that she spoke to, uh, seems to feel like Jody. They didn't discuss Ruby, but they seem to feel that Jody is going to get the full sixty years. So that's pretty much a life sentence for Jody because she's in her fifties. Um, that that would be a life sentence for Ruby too. Uh, I feel for some reason, and I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong, but for some reason, I feel like they're going to go light. On Ruby. I feel like they're going to go light on her. I don't know that they'll go so light on Jody. Um, I don't know how, if they can consider any of the other information that's come out about her. I feel like they're not going to be as light on Jody, but I feel like they're going to be very light on Ruby. But even if she gets, because the minimum is going to be a year per charge, so the minimum she's likely to get is four years minus about six months for time served. And I hope they don't go light on her. Not because of my dislike for her, because I don't like her, but um, not because of that, but because the, uh, we need to start taking CA more seriously. People need to start paying for what they're doing to these children. I can't tell you how many um, YouTube videos I've watched, Misery Machine, Annie Elise, Under the Ash Tree. Well, I don't know if Under the Ash Tree covers th stories like this, but um, just so many stories I've seen where children are starved to death or A-B-U-S-E-D to death. We need to start taking CA more seriously. We need to be able to say it on YouTube. We need to be able to say what it is. You know, it's just, the monster doesn't disappear because we don't give it a name, YouTube. We need, we need to be able to say these words on YouTube, and it's ridiculous that we can't, you know. And it's not just about being monetized. It's about the voice not being heard because the video is not being pushed out because it's being repressed because a certain word is in that video. And that is effed up. We need to be able to say... We need to be able to give the evil things in this world a name and say them on YouTube and let our voices be heard. It's just disgusting to me that we can't say the names of, of, of certain things. We can't, we can't, like I said, name the monsters. 
you know, it's ridiculous to me. Oh, it's not advertiser friendly. Um, like that, the whole thing with, um, with like Eugenia Cuny, I don't understand how come she can stand there and make videos of her starving herself to death, but we can't talk about it and say what it is. You know, it's just, how come Amber Lynn and, and Foodie Beauty can make these videos where they are, where they are slowly killing themselves and we can't talk about what the issue is. We can't name it, you know, and it's just a lot of mental health things we can't talk about on here. We have to give everything a nickname and it's disgusting to me that we have to do that. I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent now and I apologize. That really upsets me about YouTube. We, we can talk about things, but we can't name them. We have to give everything a cutesy little nickname and it upsets me that I have to spell out words Anyway, so Kevin has filed for divorce from Ruby, and uh, she was apparently devastated by that. But she wasn't so devastated that she forced him out of their house for 11 months. And before you come back on me and say, well, he wasn't forced out. Jody used her mental gymnastics to get them separated. And um, I want you to go back and watch, you know, if you want to, watch Jesse's interviews and stuff because it's very telling for what kind of person Jody is. And we'll just have to wait till tomorrow and see what happens. So by the time I get to work tomorrow, we'll get to work, I walk, walk into another room. But by the time I start work tomorrow, they should have received their sentences. So anyway, that's it for this video. I've got to hurry up and get it up. And uh, I will talk to everyone later. Bye.